This week, we have a challenge episode for you. We've been talking about the Big Bang Theory a lot recently, and the most important piece of evidence for this theory is the cosmic microwave background radiation. It tells us that the universe was once most certainly much smaller, hotter, and denser than it is today. The photons of the cosmic background radiation were released when the universe was around 380,000 years old and had just cooled down enough for the hydrogen plasma that filled the universe to become hydrogen gas. Free electrons were captured by protons to form the very first atoms. In the process, the distance that the average photon could travel went from not very far to greater than the length of the entire observable universe. When we look at the CMB today, we really are looking at the universe from 13.7 billion years ago. We're looking at an ocean of orangey red hot plasma that would later collapse into galaxies and people and stuff. Okay, here are some episodes on the CMB for you to review. Today, I have two questions for you about how far those CMB photons actually traveled. The first one is purely conceptual and requires no math, while the second most definitely requires math. Choose only one to answer. The advantage of trying the harder one is that you'll be competing against fewer people, but that won't help you if you get it wrong. So here we go. The universe was much smaller when the CMB light was emitted. In fact, all of those blobs of plasma were a mere 43 million light years away from the patch of space that would later contain the Milky Way. Back then, this patch of space just contained a slight overdensity of plasma that looked pretty much the same as the rest of those blobs. However, the light from the CMB had to travel a lot further than those 43 million light years to reach this patch of space because it was traveling through an expanding universe. By the time it reaches us, Right now, the universe has expanded so that the galaxies and clusters that those blobs evolve into are now 1100 times further away, giving us an observable universe that's 93 billion light years across. So, first question. What physical distance did that light from the CMB travel through an expanding universe to reach us today? Seriously no math required. Okay, and the mathy question. Just before the CMB was created, the universe was filled with this plasma that consisted mostly of protons, electrons, and helium nuclei. That plasma was effectively opaque because photons couldn't travel far without bouncing off all those free electrons. The universe became transparent when it cooled enough for those electrons to be captured by protons to form the first hydrogen atoms in an event called recombination. The question is, what average distance could a photon travel before being scattered by an electron just before recombination? The only hint I'll give you is to tell you some of the numbers you'll need to look up or figure out. You'll need an estimate of the baryonic mass and volume of the observable universe. You'll need the redshift of the CMB and the Thompson scattering cross-section. Your answer doesn't have to be too accurate. Within a factor of two or so is fine. You should be able to get a good estimate with some pretty simple calculations. But you must show me those calculations. Email your answers to pbsspacetime at gmail.com within two weeks for a chance to win a PBS Spacetime t-shirt. We'll randomly select three correct answers for each of the two questions. Your submission should use the subject line CMB Challenge. We filter by subject line, so make sure you use exactly that phrase. You should just submit one answer, and please don't discuss the problem in the comments or anywhere else online, let alone give your answers there. If you do, you're disqualified. I also have a quick announcement. This coming Monday, March 14th, I'll be participating in a public seminar on the new LIGO discovery of gravitational waves. It's at my own Lehman College in New York City. If you're in the area and would like to attend, please RSVP to pbsspacetime at gmail.com with the subject line NYC Gravitational Waves. And as long as we still have space, you'll receive full details. You'll learn way more about gravitational waves than on any YouTube show. Happy physicking and see you next week for a full new episode of Space Time. Thank you.